Modesty is not one of Mr. Lewis's virtues. His fans think he's adorable, and Mr. Lewis admires their taste. I'm being honest, I'm not bragging. Uh, as far as money goes, I'll just, it, it don't mean that much to me. I'm just talking about a God-given talent, a stylist. Jerry Lee Lewis is back all right. He's been wrecking pianos for 15 years, and he's more popular now than ever. He's lost the pink complexion, which fans thought so dishy in the 50s, the wavy locks have thin, and he's grown a beard for the title role in a play about Christ. But the scandals of the past are forgiven. The wiggle of his 36-year-old hips is enough to send the audience wild. Such hysteria has recently been reserved for beat groups, but even the Beatles are fans of Mr. Lewis, and many believe he's the greatest rock and roller alive. Mr. Lewis arrives in Glasgow accompanied by his personal television producer. He also has a five-man band of rockers, and in the States, he employs two pilots to fly a couple of private planes he bought to carry him around to concerts. The secret of Mr. Lewis's success is that he's got staying power for a rocker. The other rock and rollers of the 50s either faded away, or like Mr. Elvis Presley, they simply got tired of rocking. Mr. Lewis performs now, just like he did in the 50s. I like the double wall, I thought it was funny. You came along and moved me, honey. I changed my mind. This love is fine. Goodness gracious, great balls. Mr. Lewis is particularly remembered for his great balls of fire. This melody and his rendering of whole lot of shaking going on sold more than 20 million records throughout the world. His private life was the problem. He had two wives before he was 22. Wife number three caused the scandal in Britain. Miss Myra Brown was his cousin and a child of 13. When the fans booed him off stage and accused him of baby snatching, Mr. Lewis packed it in and said his career in Britain was finished. Yet Mr. Lewis kept on singing, and in the States, when rock and roll fell from favor, he became one of the highest paid country and western singers. Today, he's got all the trappings of wealth. Flashy diamond rings, two luxury homes, a fleet of expensive cars, and also wife number four. On tour, Mr. Lewis leads a somewhat confined life. Until he goes to the theater, he refuses to leave his hotel. It's reputed that you're a very rich man. Um, if that's true, uh, and you are a very rich man, um, wh why do you keep on working? Well, I'll tell you, my boy, <laughs> no, I've, I've made a lot of money. And uh, I guess you could say that I'm the only man in the world that's made $14 million and spent 16. Have you made $14 million? Oh, I made a lot more than that. Why do you keep on working on it? Because I love to play the piano. I love to sing. And I will do it until the good Lord calls me home. Today, 15 years after he earned his first scream from a teenage bopper, Mr. Lewis still needs Big Dick, his bodyguard, to protect him from over-enthusiastic fans. Big Dick normally carries a gun, but he couldn't bring it to Britain. Tonight, Mr. Lewis will give two concerts, and few rockers of his age could still fill a hole like this.
act is the most polished unrehearsed act I've ever seen in my life. Because not even his musicians know what he's going to do until he starts playing at the piano. And they immediately pick it up. And there it is. You know, uh, there's the show. <laughs> He affects all ages in a way. I mean, uh, you do see middle-aged as well as the youngsters. And a lot of men as well as women. Now, this is, I find very interesting as far as what he brings out in the male in the audience. Uh, as the Beatles excited the females, he excites the males. Hello? For these fans, this moment ends 16 years of longing. They're meeting the man they first rocked to in their teens. Mr. Lewis is more popular than ever today because he helps these fans remember the good old 1950s when they were rockers too. How long have you been a fan? 16 years. Fan of Jerry Lewis. I was at the airport this morning at one o'clock. I come off night shift this morning and rushed to the airport to see if I could get a glimpse of him. Unfortunately, I couldn't. But my night's been made tonight. Yeah. I've been trying to see him for 15 years and failed until tonight. He's been in Glasgow twice before and I was unlucky. And I don't really think I'm taking a sentimental journey. I think my talent is proving out to be what it is. The greatest talent in the field of music that I'm in. Yet. Now I don't compare myself with uh, other talents like uh, Beethoven or this or that. Uh, you know, there's a stylist before my time, or Hank Williams' time, or Al Jolson, or Jimmy Rogers. This is, goes way back. But uh, I'm talking about what's happening now. No, I'm not taking a sentimental journey, sir. I've been journeying ever since I was born. I was born feet first. My daddy and a doctor delivered me, and I come out jumping, and I've been jumping ever since. Mr. Lewis may be a symbol of a growing nostalgia for the 50s when his style of country and western rock revolutionized popular music. And perhaps the kids of today might find his style to be somewhat dated. present-day kings of beat they worship are in a way carbon copies of rockers like him. Men who started it all and can't quite bear to give it up or abandon the gimmicks which made them famous.